Uh, hello everyone, my name is Priyanka Shrestha, I'm the news editor at Energy Live News and we're here at the Energy Live Expo event in, at the QE2 Centre in London. Um, if you watched our Periscope earlier, I mentioned that we'll have a whole host of interviews throughout the day uh, and we've got our first interviewee here today. Uh, but before we get on to that, I'm having a bit of a cough today, so if I have a coughing fit, I would like to apologise in advance. Um, and also if you'd like to join in the discussions, uh, you can do so using the hashtag ELE uh, and also you can use our Twitter handle which is at Energy Live News where you can follow um, what's happening throughout the day if you're not here today or if you are here, uh, do share us your thoughts on what you think about the day. Uh, so moving on, uh, our first uh, speaker we've got today is Jeff Whittingham from Dong Energy. Hello Jeff, how are you? Nice to meet you. You too. Um, so initially if you could just talk me through um, what you were involved in at Dong. Okay, so it's Jeff Whittingham. I'm the managing director of Dong Energy's energy supply business in the UK. We uh, supply gas and electricity and other services to industrial and commercial customers. Um, and in terms of your background uh, in the industry, could you talk us a bit about yourself? Yep, so uh, it's a long time I've been in the industry. I've been in since 1987. Uh, joining East Midlands Electricity. Um, I've worked for a succession of energy companies and I've worked in a number of different disciplines from supply through business development through trading so uh, I'm fully grounded and fully sort of a uh, um, lot of experience in, in INC and in INC customers in particular in the UK. Um, so you say 1987 is when you joined, long, long time. time. Yeah. Um, how do you think the energy landscape has changed since you first joined the I industry? Mean, it, I, I was thinking about that and reflecting on that this morning as I came here. Um, you know, clearly when I started, uh, there was no competition in the marketplace. It was a sort of government owned uh, sort of uh, utility sector. Uh, and what we've done is we've introduced competition progressively from 1990 onwards. And I was involved in some of the first electricity contracts at that time. Uh, and it was very difficult because it was not clear how all of the mechanisms worked. But the, the market has developed and become significantly more sophisticated. And you know, the opportunities for customers now are far greater than they were. This is, you know, one of the most competitive energy markets in the world. It is one of the toughest energy markets in the world. And at times, probably one of the most complex energy markets in the world. And not only for a supplier like ourselves, uh, but it's also difficult for the customers to navigate through some of that complexity that's in this market. But it is, it's a fantastic journey. You know, it's a, a fantastic place to be. And I, I you know, get up out of bed every morning, quite happy to be in this sector. Um, so what would you say are, are some of the biggest challenges for uh, the end user at the moment? Yeah, I think, um, you know, I think the, the market is in transition. You know, we talked just about competition and the transition to competition. I think there's another transition coming in. Coming in. Um, I think there'll be a, a much more, a bigger drive towards renewable energy for customers. Uh, whether that's buying directly from the grid green energy or whether it be self-generating behind the meter. I think as well we're going to see technologies coming into play so we talk about batteries we talk about demand response we talk about big data and artificial intelligence this is going to revolutionize it's going to be the next change in this industry and for me you know for customers it's complex i understand that but in the next five years it's going to be a different space with smart grids with all different things that are going to happen uh, and i think people need to get ready for that new wave of technology and what it can do for their procurement strategy um, so talking about this transition, um, obviously low the low carbon agenda is a big thing um, and Dong Energy has, is now changing its name to Orsted yep. um, and I think that plays a big uh, role in it. So could you talk us through uh, why uh, the company decided to make this transition? Okay, so um, you know, some time ago we decided to divest the oil and natural gas business, the upstream oil and natural gas business. And that transaction was completed at the end of September and we sold that business to INEOS. Um, Dong is not, when you talk about Dong, you don't think about renewable energy. And Dong stood for Danish Oil and Natural Gas, so it was quite obvious that once we'd divested that business, we had to change the name of the company. And actually we'd been working on it for a number of months before this. Um, so what we decided to do, obviously it's a big marketing exercise. Uh, we've changed the company name to Erstel or I think in the UK it will be pronounced Orsted. Yeah, that's how, I thought I yeah, got that name so, wrong. Yeah, I was going to test you on how you were going to pronounce it, but Erstel okay. is how the, how the Danes would uh, explain who we are. And we've been named after a Danish scientist. Uh, he was born in the late uh, 1700s, and he's accredited with uh, discovering electromagnetism. 
and also he had a sort of a, a view of nature and electromagnetism and energy. Um, and we thought it was appropriate uh, in terms of our Danish heritage and that linkage with the Danish scientists to call the company Ørsted. It also signifies the fact that it is a sea change in the way our company will, will approach the market in the future. We are a green energy company. Uh, we will no longer be burning fossil fuels. Beyond 2023, we'll stop the burning of coal in our business and we'll have dramatically reduced our CO2 footprint. As a company, we have a vision that the future energy network can be renewable energy driven. And that's really where, we, where we're moving to. We've got our offshore wind business, we're going into batteries, we're going into waste technologies that produce green power. And so very much, and very different I think, to any of the other utilities out there, we're going totally green. Um, so why do you think, why is it so important for Dong Energy, or uh, is it Ørstel? Ørstel. okay, I'll try and get that right. Ørsted, yeah, I think that's easier. Ørstel, I'll try and remember that. Um, why would you say it's so important for the company to move away from fossil fuels and towards the slow carbon agenda? Yeah. I think it's about responsibility. Well, firstly, you know, if you look at the UK's um, energy policy, it has three, three uh, tenants to the policy. One is uh, su supply security. Secondly, it's about affordability, and third, it's about sustainability. And clearly, we're heavily into the sustainability piece, while still trying to address both security of supply um, and, and affordability, which we're actually making great strides in terms of the technology. Um, it, it's important because I believe, and, I, and the company believes, that climate change is happening. Uh, therefore, in the future, we need to act more responsibly in the way that we generate electricity. And actually, we want to be at the forefront of that revolution to take us from a brown economy to a green economy. So, so for us, and if you ask our chief executive, he will say the same. It's incredibly important that we act as a responsible company. And we believe we do good things. And we do good things for the, for, for the environment. Um, and obviously, over the last couple of weeks, we've had uh, big news in the energy industry. We had the Ofgem uh, report about the state of the energy market. Uh, we've had the Dieter Helm review on the energy market as well and prices. Um, and both of those reports highlighted the fact that consumers, so that includes businesses and householders, that they're paying too much for the energy. Um, and this is definitely a concern for businesses here. Yeah? We're talking about businesses. Um, what would you say uh, is your advice or your top tips for those businesses out there? Yeah, I think, I think the landscape, as I said earlier, is definitely changing. Uh, I think the energy buyer in the future has got to be more innovative. Um, clearly, you know, we're, we're very sympathetic to increasing prices, particularly when it affects the industrial and commercial customers, which is our sort of home base, but also the domestic customer as well. Um, I guess for me, it's about sort of seeking out those new technologies. So, you know, for instance, what do we offer? We offer renewable energy, directly from our wind farms and we can certify that. We can offer a range of demand response services where the customer can try and reduce their overall cost of energy by generating other revenue streams. So we've differentiated ourselves in the market. And also I think the customer can look at behind the meter technologies. So rather than be reliant on the grid, I think you can look at energy solutions and that's not just buying a boiler or a control system, it's a holistic solution for the customer that overall reduces their energy consumption. So I think the way forward, and I think in terms of the revolution in this marketplace, in 10 years time, uh, energy, uh, energy companies or people who consume energy will generate a fair proportion of their energy and that will answer a number of those trilemmas that I talked about in terms of cost, security supply and renewable generation. It's going to be difficult, as I said at the start, a difficult transition, but I think that's where customers have got to go. Don't consume the energy off the, uh, off the grid, actually generate your own energy. Use your site to produce revenue in the future. Um, so would you say that is the single biggest change we're going to see over the next five to ten years? Yeah, I mean, you know, we're in an industrial revolution. We're, we're in a revolution from a brown economy, a generation economy, to a green generation economy. It, it, that revolution is going to be quite dramatic and in transition it's going to be quite difficult because we're going to have to spend money on grids, on systems and processes to get us there. So for me it's about adopting new proven technologies when they become commercially viable, particularly in the green space and you know if you look at the batteries blended with solar, offshore wind and the way that we've reduced costs there as a company, um, I think you've got to be very technology savvy and I think you've got to look to energy companies to help support that journey. I think it's also important that 
energy policy, not only at a national level, but at a company level, shouldn't be set over one to three years. We're now talking about an energy policy that really needs to be set over a 10-year horizon. And I think, therefore, it challenges the current buyer-seller relationships. And so an energy company has got to be more of an integral part of working with the customer to build an energy strategy and actually deploy that energy strategy. And again, we want to deploy those solutions and we want to deploy green solutions for industrial and commercial customers. Okay, that's a um, good note to end on. But before we finish, i um, just like to ask you what you think of the event so far. We had Energy Live Expo. Have you been to our event before? To be honest with you, I mean, I've been to most of the events, having been around this industry for 30 years. This is one I've never actually been to. So uh, what, what's your, what are your thoughts, initial it's, thoughts? It's really good. I mean, it's, it's, it's always great to see customers in this sort of environment. It's always great to impart new knowledge to customers. And, and I also think, when I've watched the videos, because I have watched the videos, uh, I quite like the, a bit of controversy sometimes that, that works its way into some of these discussions yeah, as well. I think Sumit and Jeff are yeah, quite keen know, on and that. Actually, I was a bit concerned that they might be interviewing, but um, yeah, so uh, nice to see a bit of controversy, shake things up a bit and actually do things differently. Um, so it's great to see people, uh, it's great to see customers in this environment and uh, we're pleased to be a supporter and a sponsor of this event. Well, thank you very much for your time, Jeff. Um, and thank you for anyone and everyone who's been watching us. Um, like I said, we'll have a host whole range of interviews throughout the day. So do make sure you follow us on social media. So Twitter, Instagram, uh, Facebook and LinkedIn, which is at Energy Live News. And I'll see you later.